In engineering like this, building stuff out of gifts and garbage, um, there are always compromises. And this episode is about those compromises. Welcome to episode 14 of the Studio Build-Out. I'm pretty sure I'm still Sam. But yeah, this episode we, we had to fix some stuff, we had to do some emergency repairs, and we had to replace some parts, and we had to rethink some of how the wiring was done. So, let's get to it. Okay, so this line conditioner thing. Mm -hmm. I know what hair conditioner does, makes things softer. What line are you conditioning, and what does it mean Power to just line. get rid of the noise? Um... Well, uh, old buildings and especially old wiring and old neighborhoods, and we're all three, you'll often get capacitive coupling with noise sources uh, or just noisy transformers, noisy devices plugged into the line. So instead of a clean 60 hertz AC signal off your power line, there's usually a lot of noise and a lot of crap mixed in with it. And I know it's pretty noisy here. It used to be way noisier until we replaced all, replaced all the lights. And, uh, but there's still other noise to be had, uh, especially given that there's a dentist nearby. Some of their equipment can be pretty high frequency and can generate a lot of noise. So we're not just talking about the literal noise of like a boom box in an adjacent unit or the dentist drill. We're talking electrical noise. And what a transformer will do will allow the AC to pass while allow while not allowing DC and, and other kinds of sick unwanted signals to they, they shall not pass. Um, so transformer conditioner conditioner is a type of transformer then? Uh, a conditioner is one of the uses of a transformer. It also completely isolates any of the equipment here. Uh, from the mains, making it a little bit safer, but I mean, there's still a shock risk, but not quite as bad a one. Cool. Now, why'd you empty out that cabinet there? Oh, um, to get at the innards. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> um, the answer you were probably digging for is I took the mix of the digital mixer out and I took the rack ears off as much as I would like to rack mount it. Every one of these has a plug in it, and it was looking pretty cursed when I had it wired up. And I don't want it ha sticking out. There's no, there's nothing here user operable. So I decided that I was just going to keep it on the inside of the rack in here, just sitting on the floor. So, um, and instead, for anything I may want to access. Uh, I updated our aux panel to include uh, mixer outputs and headphone outputs for that mixer. Okay. And since it's a digital mixer, all of its control is done over computer, so I don't really need to touch it. Well, the studio is done. It's all connected together, but it's not, uh, it's not complete yet. I still have to get the levels in. Um, just the little tweaking, little the tiny screwdrivers into tiny potentiometers to get all the levels right and to get it so that's listenable. Because we've still got a few outstanding issues. For example, the CD player is entirely too hot. Some of the computers are a little bit too low. The phone system is kind of funny in that it is both too cold but overdriven. So it's too much sound being put in too small of a pipe and the Play-Doh goes everywhere and it's just no good. Now, I don't have uh, a proper tone generator, a calibrated tone generator, so I'm going to have to do kind of everything by ear and kind of everything a little bit weird. But the a model I, I, set a, uh, I set out to talk about in episode one uh, still pertains. All the beep boop stuff is over here and all the wild wow stuff is over here, the analog side and the digital side. Me being a computer guy, and the digital side being gear that I've used for years without a problem, I'm going to start with the digital side and I'm going to gauge whether or not something is working on the digital side and then use that to, um, to calibrate the analog side. Now, as long as they're all thinking the same, levels are all the same thing, it's going to sound pretty good. And then when I get a calibrated tone generator, I can come back in and get the job done. 
But I'm going to start with the CD player because it's too hot, and that gives me uh, that gives me some stuff to work with. So this morning I came in and I pressed three hit albums. Uh, I have 440 hertz at zero VU, and then I followed that up with my uh, second studio hit, 440 hertz at full scale, and then finally with my EP, uh, white noise at full scale. Now. You know, I'm going to drop these in the crap CD player because those are the only CD players I have that work. And as soon as I, you know, I drop the zero VU in here, and if I see 20 dB down on the uh, on the digital mixer without preamplification, then I have a pretty good idea that I'm going to have zero. I can adjust for zero VU on the analog side, and it's going to sound pretty good. It's going to work the way it's supposed to go. And then I can sort of reference level, uh, I can level everything else based off of that reference. And by the end of it, I should have something that sounds pretty good. Also, I'm not wearing a lav mic right now because I'm going to be doing a lot of climbing around, as you'll see in a second. And so we're just going to use the mic built into the GoPro here and see where that takes us. So let's get started with that. All right, here's the studio. Let's uh, turn everything on. There's the switch down here. That's the isolation transformer. Everything's powering up. Computers are booting. All right, we're in here. Now the guy we need to adjust is back there. Uh, that blue matchbox there. All right, cut a little light in here. But here's the digital mixer. And there's the computer. So, plug the computer. Now we can turn everything on and off. And I can pop. I can pop this guy back in. That is definitely quiet. I hear it under there, though. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Oh. <laughs> Can I climb behind there and see what the hell's wrong with it? Well, let's go back to zero VU here. What is meant by VU? VU. What kind of units are they though? VU. Huh. Wikipedia. Okay. Okay, that doesn't need much of an adjustment. But that certainly does. <laughs> okay, yeah, my my area is super ugly because working, so live with it. So I have this. Uh, buy these and bought these on eBay year, years ago. They're super useful. Um, Put it on line in. Okay, line in. <laughs> Becky sneezed, didn't want you to know that. So she went <laughs> <laughs> because that's somehow more uh, socially acceptable than a sneeze. Okay, did I actually have a, no, I don't have a disc in it. Would you go get one of the 440 discs, please? Yep. The zero VU one, very nice. Okay, so without jiggling it around a lot, let's uh, no, I, I was supposed to press the friendly green button and sp instead I pressed the other one. Let's go. Okay. I think that red 
good ones worse. Yeah. Did I mention that I picked these up for 10 bucks at a recycler? All right, we'll get the screwdriver. Sure. I thought I was gonna be lucky and that this was gonna be a CD-ROM drive. <laughs> and that was just a CD player based on a CD-ROM drive and that I could replace these things indefinitely. But no such luck, but I think between the Denon uh, CD decks, which are very, very nice, but require um, cartridges that are just, they're not hen's teeth yet, they're getting there. Should we get the viewfinder, please? Um, I think I might actually try my hand at building my own CD-ROM drive, or CD player from a CD-ROM drive, like those hacks you see on like Hackaday and stuff. That might actually be fun, because then I could control the entire audio chain and have it do fun stuff like that. Um, is anybody really an American DJ? Does anybody really want to know? It does have digital out, but I don't have anything digital out, because I very rarely need it. So by the time something is digital, it's usually, usually already inside of a computer where it's nice and safe for me. But I would like to get into some of that AES stuff at some point. There we go. So while I don't think it's um, a CD-ROM drive, it does appear to be a fairly standard CD conveyance in there with the single pot. And I mean, this this is all real standard stuff with with some suspension that doesn't do any good at all. What on earth is that vector warning? This? Yeah, don't drop ink on it. Warning: Do not shoot laser into remaining eye. <laughs> I thought it was. Don't squirt your octopus ink on it. It's a fairly badly rendered. Uh, um, laser warning, but hang on. There, now it's safe. So this comes out now. Oh man, this is just connections everywhere, ain't it? Animalize it from oh yeah, oh boy. I can see those connectors moving. Okay. Ta-da! And, here, let's bring it in. So, you can just see that if I move these guys, th these are broken solder connections and the, and the RCAs are free. They're just wiggling around in their hole there. In the hole they've dug out for themselves, so. This guy's led a rough life. Such as the life of an American DJ. Yes. Although it looks like this may have been repaired already because it's still got, it's got a... It's a flux. Goop on it, yeah, flux. All right, well, not much to this. Well, there wouldn't be much to this if I could remember where the hell I put my solder. Because, you know, I don't use that all the time. Here it is. All right. So this has got lead in it, because hazardous substances are my, are my, bag, jam? are my jam, that's the word I'm looking for, are my uh, marmalade, um, but that means they'll take, it will take strain a little bit better. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to touch this and see what the hell's going on. Oh wow, milkshake, that's what's going on there. 
Yeah, that was repaired, I would say, about uh, 2002-2003. You cannot smell the age of vaporized solder. Can you? No. Are they a little less wiggly? They seem to be, as the saying goes, a little less wiggly. But I think I'm going to hit those guys while I'm at it. So that's the other side of the connector. But it's version zero. Version zero, everybody. That's why it's got this wire, because it's version zero. Like, I haven't made that mistake on nearly every circuit board I've ever made. Why the copper tape on the inside by the connectors? I'm guessing to get a superior ground. Or to give the impression of a superior ground. Because this is... To give the impression of a superior ground, because this case is obviously plastic. Although... Are you saying that there's nothing superior about this device? No, I, I actually... For the price I paid for it, it's quite a nice CD player. Hey! Active? <laughs> yeah, it's been... It's been treated. Neat. Alright, whatever this paint is, I want some for my acrylic projects. Uh, yeah, you tried to achieve that on I did. a few homemade attempts, right? Yeah, accent on tried. That looks right. Uh, that clearly hooks up up here. <laughs> okay. I haven't pushed anything in yet. I'm, I'm looking to see the make. I'm making sure I got it. I got it good. Gotcha. Okay. You know what I love doing? Screwing things in blind. You know, because the camera is clearly more important than making this thing work. You got it going. It's not threaded poorly. No, no, no it's flush. It's okay. good. That feels good. Now it's way down. That's a big delay. Up, 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 uh, stop, wait, up, a hair. Okay, now take a look. Well, you were talking about fastening a screw blind. How about leveling that with just <laughs> by feel? Yeah, okay, that's that's bang on both ones. We're gonna have to drop a beat over this tone in uh, post or something. <laughs> you know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping it gets content matched. Warner Brothers has blah de blah de blah de blah copyright on 440 hertz. What you putting in now? Hit the button. Push the button? Mm -hmm. Just off? Yeah. So we had the CD player all toned out, and uh, it's an hour later, and I had a snack. Um, but the thing is, the CD, because I'm dumb, or because, more to the point, I didn't want to intimidate people at the uh, new users of this board, uh, I've combined mixers, because these, these channels have A and B sources, so the CD player control is also the control for this computer, uh, which is what I think is going to be the main audio, like the main cart player. So. <sighs> There's someone at the door. All right. 
Well, um, we had to take a quick break because a friend of mine showed up and gifted me with a Macintosh portable, of all things. Uh, you may see some video about that later. However, we're back to leveling, so we have this. But this... This, this chat, this, uh, what's the word I look for? Strip also controls this computer. So now I have to turn this computer on, which incidentally turns on that computer. That's amazing. You have no idea what's taking us from synth flute to synth oboe? What's dropping in the square wave, yeah. But I know what that is. <sighs> it's cranked up as much as I can make it. So I gotta rethink, I gotta think about how to do that for a moment. Confession time. Putting two devices on the same strip was a bad idea. I knew it was a bad idea. The only people telling not telling me it was a bad idea was those of us, was the part of my brain and, and the folks who were specifically interested in keeping the studio easy to use uh, from an end user standpoint. Not to have so many blinking buttons and so many knobs that it confuses the crap out of people. But trying to get a, all the devices to speak at the same level and not have not being able to use the preamps on either the digital or the analog mixer to get my levels right, like being able to do no level adjustment whatsoever, was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I'm making an 11.58 p.m. decision that I'm going to ditch this this three, um, this three strip area is going to become five strips. I'm going to have to make some changes to the wiring and uh, the, on the patches underneath here. We're going to have to clean up a couple more, uh, a couple more in sixties. But that's it. The way I designed it, no actual rewiring has to occur outside of what's going on right here. And then I can use the preamps that are built into the digital mixer. I can level it properly based upon what's going on here. And then nobody, there's a whole bank of buttons nobody ever has to fiddle with. Because we never have to swap between source A and source B. We can just, and that way we can use the carts and the CD and the vinyl all at the same time. Which was something that we couldn't do before. It's the right way to do it. It's the way I should have done it to begin with. And that's the way I'm going to do now. Hello. Uh, this is our parts board. Um, as you can see, it has many parts. They are very dirty. So we're gonna pick out a couple in 60s. Uh, we have a few choices here. It looks like we have, I don't know, 20 to choose from. And uh, and then um, Becky's gonna clean them while I rewire the uh, thing. I keep wanting to call it the D mark, but it's not a D mark because there's no phone. There's no phone company involved. So Becky, which ones should we use? I can see where you're lifting up, and you were gonna decap it. 
<laughs> oh, pull one of these ICs out. Oh, I don't want that. That would have been bad. Yeah, see, I can just push it back in. Which I think somebody on YouTube suggests mentioned that this happened. I don't find the op apps come out of these a lot, except that when people want to pull channels, they pu they put their finger here and I yanks it out. Uh, these things originally came with an actual device to help you yank these things out. But what I find is I just reach under and I grab here on the surface mount components, which isn't precisely good, but it's better than, than the alternative, and just yank up and then yank out the ISA port. They're going to need cleaning. Yeah. Yeah, mini finger gunk. Make go. Okay. might seem like a fairly big revision in the wrong direction, but uh, it isn't. This gives me a chance to rethink things, and again, it was designed so that any part could be removed and looked at individually, and given that I have to re, uh, rethink a massive portion of how I did this, I'm reaping the benefits of that right now, given that I have just completely removed the um, the wiring betwixt the C6, the R60, and everything else without damaging anything. Yeah. Um, Whee! but what I have to deal with now is how I'm going to put in two more input racks. I have to think about that because you'll notice that there's this huge unpopulated area right here. This is where all the logic wiring goes, which I haven't touched yet. That's not, believe it or not, that's not part of a re the revision, revision One Studio. Eventually all the wiring on these bottom, on these gaps, uh, it's all five volt logic. So I'm just gonna back it into an Arduino Mega and export all the signaling or uh, over MQTT, uh, like a good little digital human. But now I have to stop and think about how I want to do uh, how I want to add two more strips. Um, do I drop one more punch block in, in, a, in an appropriate spot, and then bodge between two places, like this is a bad circuit board? Possibly. That's a thing. Um, it also gives me a chance to rethink hat phones, because I just left this alone, figuring that I would amplify on this end and export over. I'm not doing that. That's stupid. Uh, so this is my opportunity. I was going to have to do this eventually, so why not kill two birds with one stone and uh, redo redo the... Sorry, hat phones is the headphones to guest users. The reason it's called a hat is something I haven't gotten into, um, but I will shortly. Um, yeah, so why don't I do that? it when I started, but I'm now ahead of the game than, um, than where I was when I started recording today. Uh, vinyl and CD have moved from secondary sources on these strips to their own strips over here, and vinyl and CD are leveled in. Aux doesn't matter because I have no idea what's getting plugged into Aux, that's why it's Aux, so I'm leaving it alone. 
We do not have a CPU 2 yet, so I can't level that one in. Uh, and CPU 1 is leveled in, so they're all, they're, they're all, they work. Um, what's next is the phone systems, and that's a place where I've been having some trouble. And then after the phone systems, uh, we're at microphones, and we're actually still waiting for those to come in. Um, and uh, once that's done, uh, I configure these computers. I finish configuring that computer back there. And this is a functional studio. One more app. One more app. One more app. Well, that was a lot to get through, but we got through it and everything works and everything is good. What you see before you is a list of my patrons, the people who help me out, the people providing the wind to my sails as I take this adventure into radio. If you would like to join my Patreon, you can click on the link below. If you join my Patreon, you get to see these episodes a little bit early, or especially early in the case of this one and the next one. And, uh, yeah, help me keep the lights on, some extra content, fun things like that. Join us next time for the last episode of the first phase of Waveform Orchard when we turn the studio on and do work on it.